What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko. I'm excited for today's video because we're going to be showing off one of my favorite synchro based decks and that is Sword Soul. Now there's been a lot of changes both in the metagame as well as the ban list and I think this deck needs an update to keep up with what's going on in the metagame today. So that's what we're going to be doing in today's video. We're going to be showing you guys how to play Sword Soul in today's format and be as competitive as possible. And if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll catch it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned in for all of that thank you guys all for watching i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and with that let's get right into the deck profile all right so just before we get started off with this deck profile i do want to say that sword soul is one of those decks that has been seeing a little bit less play recently however i think the really cool thing about this deck is because the engine is so compact you can build so much of the deck to combat today's metagame which is insane so let's get started into the deck profile and explain a little bit more why that works so here we are starting off with three incredible ecclesia the virtuous incredible ecclesia is such an insane card this card going first is obviously really good but going second it's even better it's a free special summon a free body for you on top of that the really cool thing about ecclesia is because ash is not that prevalent in today's format you're not really worried about ecclesia ever getting negated so that's why i really like the three ecclesia then we're playing of course three moye three long yuan two of the taie three emergence and two blackouts so the ratios for the sword soul cards are not that different except that i'm playing two blackout instead of one blackout i actually really like the second blackout because drawing the first one is actually never a bad thing sometimes it's actually really nice because off of your moye chichao you can end up actually searching an emergence or a follow-up rather than having to search the blackout so that's why i really like playing the two blackout on top of that as you guys can see we're playing desires and i don't like banishing the one blackout i also really like this as like the 40th card in the deck i really was at like 39 and i was like okay what do i play as the 40th card and i just thought the second blackout would actually be really good in testing i've been really liking it again drawing a blackout is never a bad thing and it's also really good for you in the graveyard whereas if you banish it you get an extra token to your side of the field which can be really really relevant so that's why i like playing the two blackout but other than that i think the sword soul ratios are pretty standard then we're playing the 10 e cards i actually really wanted to cut these cards for a while but i decided not to so i'm going to explain that in a second but we're playing three ashuna three vishuda as well as two adhara we're not playing heavenly circle we're not playing vessel we actually don't need to play these right now so i'm going to get into why i wanted to cut them and then i'm also going to get into why i'm not playing heavenly or vessel so first of all i wanted to cut them mostly because vishuda and ashuna are both light and dark which means that you're susceptible to getting hit with the bestial monsters and the problem with that is they're most likely going to get hit with a bestial before you can even get their value so now all you've done essentially is giving your opponent a free body on their side of the field and you haven't gotten access to the ashuna effect you haven't gotten access to the vishuda effect going second let's just say going first of course ashuna special summons for you so that's the thing right like i really wanted to cut these however i chose not to and you honestly can't because because there's not enough worm monsters that are relevant enough in the game so what i mean by that is if you want to use your long wand to special summon if you want to use your moye to reveal you really need a worm monster moye can technically reveal the spells and traps long wand can technically also pitch the spells and traps but sometimes you need those right these provide value for you so that's why over time i thought like hey i really want to cut these but you really cannot cut them even if you're just using them as fodder for your long wand as fodder for your moye i think that's still really relevant as well so that's why i didn't cut them even though i really really wanted to and the second thing i wanted to talk about is that we're not playing vessel and we're not playing heavenly so let's talk about heavenly first imperm ash valor those cards are not super prevalent in today's format so because they're not why am i playing heavenly what am i trying to dodge there's really nothing to dodge i guess you could argue you can dodge sulik but again if you're trying to go first anyways they're probably not going to have the tier limits trap set up anyways so that's why i was just thinking like heavenly is not important in that sense and then vessel the thing is what was i just telling you about ashuna and vishuda if you just vessel and you dump one of your tenny names and they just get hit with a bestial you've done nothing your vessel has literally just essentially just giving your opponent a monster which is not a great thing right so that's why i decided not to play vessel that's why i decided to not play heavenly however you still have to play the names i really wanted to up adhara to three just because it's the only non-dark or light one however adhara on its own doesn't really do anything so that's why i'm still playing just the two adhara the 10 stuff don't get me wrong i understand it's kind of not the best format for them but they're just still really relevant and you need to be playing them then we're playing two desires this deck doesn't really have a lot of draw power so desires is really the only one that you can play and the thing is like i said earlier i don't like to banish the one black out so that's why we're actually playing the two blackout because if you need to desires you know you're probably not going to be banishing both i mean hopefully not banishing both right so that's why i like the two desires still then this is what i said about the deck here 
here we have so many slots still to combat the meta because we've hit everything that we need to hit in terms of the deck core. So the really cool thing about Sword Soul and why I like it so much is because it can adapt to any format. In any format, if certain hand traps are more relevant, then you play the hand traps. If board breakers are more relevant, then you can play board breakers. So in this format, what's really prevalent is two things. One, because it's the post-December banlist format, we're worried about the tier limit matchup, which is a lot of graveyard stuff, and we're worried about the dimensional fissures, macro cosmos, and like the floundery stuff, because that's going to be really relevant as well. So the really cool thing about Sword Soul is we can focus on one of those, or we can focus on the meta decks, and then fill the rest of the deck up with cards that are combat against those kind of metas, right? So in this case, we're playing the two DD Crow, the two Skullmeister, as well as three Ghost Bell. The reason for that is we all know how good tier limit is. DD Crow is really good against the tier limit matchup. Skullmeister is really good against the tier limit matchup. Ghost Bell is really good against the tier limit matchup. It's also good against a couple other matchups as well. So that's why I'm playing the three Bell, the two Meister, as well as the two Crow. At one point, I was thinking of playing three Crow and cutting the blackout to one, but again, desires, right? So that's why we're playing the two blackout. But that's it for the actual anti-tier hate. So for the anti-tier hate, we actually have seven cards here. We have the two Crow, two Meister, as well as Ghost Bell, which means that we have main deck outs to the tier limit matchup. And then what's the other really good deck in today's format? Fluanderies. Now you can also argue that Grand Maju, Border Control, and some of these other stun decks are also going to be pretty prevalent. But the next cards that I'm going to be showing you guys are good against all of those matchups. Fluanderies, Border Control, Grand Maju, any of those banished decks, right? Because they're going to be playing Fissure, they may be playing Macrocosmo, and stuff like that. So for that reason, we are playing the three Infinite Impermanence. Imperm is actually not as amazing in this format. However, just specifically against Inspector Border, it's really good. Against Fossil Dyna, it's really good. Against any of the Fluanderies names, it's really good. Like if you hit the Rabina, that's also really powerful. Imperm is also really good going first because you can set it but going second it's a board breaker for you so that's why i really like three impermanence in this deck specifically in sword soul where you can fit these cards i think it's really important and technically imperm you can stop cards on the field like if your opponent normal summons a merly and needs to mill if you imperm that merly and they don't have extenders then they're kind of in a stuck position as well so that's why i think imperm actually is really good overall not a lot of people are on it so you're not going to have to be worried about getting hit with an imperm however having the imperm is really really powerful and then we're playing the one harpy's feather duster as well as three Cosmic Cyclone. Why are we doing that? Because we don't want to see Fissure. We don't want to see Pearl Arena against the tier limit. We don't want to see the Fluandri's trap card, whatever it is in the standby phase. You can hit that with Cyclone. So Dreaming Town, Dreaming Town, that's what it's called. Yeah, so this is really actually cool because this deck, unlike a lot of other decks, has the room to actually play in their main deck outs to both of those matchups. And the really cool thing is there is some overlap. Now, yes, there's no overlap with DD Crow and Skullmeister and Bell into the Fluandri's matchup. You can argue Bell is okay because if they try to, I, I believe it's Stree. I think it's Stree that banishes a card from the graveyard. If they try to use the Stree effect, you can technically ghost spell that, so that's pretty powerful as well. But technically, there's not a lot of overlap with these cards into the Floundaries matchup. However, these cards over here, these seven, the Imperms, the Feather, as well as the Cyclones, there's a lot of overlap between a lot of decks with these, right? Like again, you can hit the Pirla Reno or the Su League for tier limits. You can even hit the Scream, I believe. You can hit cards like the Dimensional Fissure, Dreaming Town, the map against the Floundaries matchup. So that's a really cool thing about these cards is there is a decent amount of overlap, which is really, really nice. Nice. Now let's get into the extra deck here. We are playing the two Chi Chao still. We're playing the one Sinister Long Yuan as well as the one Cheng Yang. I think this is a ratio that's never going to be changed. It's just really, really powerful. So we're playing these four, of course. We're playing the one Chao Fang still. This doesn't come up as often as it did before when the Bureau was really prevalent and Ogre was really prevalent in the format. However, this card is still pretty good in a lot of situations. We're playing the two Boxia as well as the one Yazi. Boxia and Yazi are really, really powerful and really easy to go into, especially when you're forced to go second. These cards are really, really nice. So you got to be playing these. Then we're playing the one Baron de Fleur, and this is kind of one of just those Omni negates that if the deck can make it, you want to play it, right? We're playing the one Draco Berserker. Draco Berserker is really good against the Flandries matchup, and this is just a personal favorite. You don't actually have to be playing this, but I really like this card, and that's Crimson Blader. If you guys don't know, Crimson Blader has an effect where if it destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, your opponent cannot normal summon or special summon level five or higher monsters during their next turn. So the really cool thing about this card is essentially if you attack over any of the tier limit monsters, they can't actually go into their extra deck at all in the following turn, which is really really powerful again this card is something that doesn't come up super often but when it does it's actually really really good so i like playing the one crimson blader this is just a personal fave card and then we're playing the one psychic and punisher this card is also kind of cuttable you don't need to be playing this however it's a really nice otk card if you are forced to go second it's not that hard to make if you use one of your level sevens as well as a level four tuner that you're going to be summoning off of your either long one or your moye or your taie so that's why i really like playing the psychic and punisher when it comes up it is really really powerful then we're playing two monk of the tenny as well as one shaman the extra deck here should be pretty self-explanatory nothing too spicy 
in here. I guess you could argue the Crimson Blader and the Psychic and Punisher. We're only playing two Monk though, not three. If you guys wanted to cut one of these for the third Monk, you can do that as well. I only ever found that two Monk is perfectly fine, so you never really needed the third one anyways. This extra deck I don't think needs a lot of explanation. Then I'm going to be showing you guys a little side deck here. Again, don't use this side deck as a, this is exactly what you need to play. Use this as more of a template so that when you guys build this deck, you guys can see, okay, what is this main deck missing? How can I specialize in games two and games three against certain matchups, right? So let's say we're going against a tier limit matchup going second. The Bisted Monsters are really good, but why are we not playing the Bisted Monsters in the main deck? That's because they don't synergize at all with the Tenyi Monsters. If you go second and you activate one of the Bisted effects and then you have it on the board, you can't actually use your Tenyi Monsters in hand. So for that reason, we're not actually main decking them. So we're playing the two Magnema as well as the two Druid Worm. This is just two different names, four cards that are really, really good into the tier limit matchup. And what I do with these cards is essentially I will side out some of the Tenyi names because these cards are just really, really impactful. So what I'll do here in this situation is I'll side out like a single Vishuda, a single Ashuna, maybe a Blackout, and then maybe one of the back row hates. So that's four cards right there just for the tier limit matchup specifically. Another card that's really good against the tier limit matchup, but I guess also really good against any deck that meets kind of wide boards is a Lava Golem, right? So Lava Golem is really cool. And you guys might be wondering, but like, why are you playing Lava Golem? You're going to lose your normal summon. That's fine. You're playing three Ecclesia. And this is the whole point of when you're going second. If you have the Ecclesia plus Lava Golem, you're in such a good spot because now you've broken your opponent's boards and then you get the special summon Ecclesia and then do your full combo. So I really like the Lava Golems. We're playing the three Lightning Storm as well as the three Regeki. This is specifically going second against the Fawandries matchup or any of those control matchups. These cards are really, really powerful. And then when you are forced to go first, or if you're going to games two and games three and you want to go first against the tier limit matchup, we are playing three Soul Drain. We all know how powerful this card against the tier limit matchup is. So I really like to play the three Soul Drain going first against them. And if you draw into this, you're pretty much winning the game. So that's why I really like this side deck right over here. This side deck is not exactly what you need to be playing. There's a lot of other cool cards that you guys can be playing that are really relevant. Even the match is very relevant as well. So you don't have to build this side deck exactly like how I'm showing it. However, like if you know your locals likes a certain matchup. So for example, let's say your locals has a lot of Flawandries players. You're going to want to build your side deck to beat the Flawandries matchup. If your locals has a lot of tier limit players, maybe cut some of the Flawandries hate and play more tier limits hate, right? So just keep that in mind when you're building a side deck. It's all based off of your locals or where you're going to play. And then you guys can build it accordingly to that. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Sword Soul for this brand new December 1st format. With the inclusion of D Fissure Macrocosmos back at three, Tier Limits is still going to be one of the strongest decks, but now we got to worry about Flanderies as well. This is the way that I think you need to be playing this deck for today's format. And again, I've been including side decks a little bit more in my deck profiles. And the reason for that, honestly, is because you really need to be prepared in today's format for two completely different kinds of decks. You have the Tier Limits combo kind of stuff. You have the Flanderies or just control stuff with the fissures and they play completely differently so the reason i've been showing you guys side decks more recently is because it's harder to build main decks to actually just cover everything so what you want to do now is you really want to cover one matchup really well and then side for the other matchups and that always depends on what your locals is right so make sure you guys keep that in mind the side decks that i show you are not set in stone they're just a template for you guys to use so thank you guys all for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already we upload five days a week here on spanko deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you'll see it right here on the channel so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned until all that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you i really do we're almost at 8,000. let's see if we can hit it before the new year so thank you guys all for watching and with that spank i'm signing out peace